Surrounding the upper area of the second floor rotunda in the Iowa State Capitol are 12 shiny, gold-colored, allegorical, life-size statues. Each statue represents a specific abstract idea or concept. The statues were created by Seraphim Cotin in 1885. Cotin was born in France in 1846, the year Iowa became a state. As you can see in these photographs from the late 1880s, there wasn't any other artwork in this area except the statues. The statues are the oldest permanent decorative work inside the Iowa State Capitol. However, on the outside of the Capitol, Cotin had earlier sculpted the symbols and the figures of the West pediment out of blue sandstone from Missouri in 1879, he was paid $1,540. Unfortunately, the blue sandstone, after battling the weathering elements of Iowa's climate for over 100 years, had too many scars and had to be replaced in 1991. However, his skillful work at the time on this project probably earned him the opportunity to do the more permanent decorative work inside the Capitol. Inside the Capitol, his creations have not had to endure the weather, so they still have their golden shine. The statues can be viewed from the first floor of the Capitol, as in this video, as well as from the second floor and from high above in the Capitol Whispering Gallery. The statues are mostly made of plaster, Therefore, you will sometimes see that support wires have been added to reinforce outstretched arms. They represent 12 adults and two children. 10 of the adults are dressed as early Greek figures in flowing robes. All that glitters is not gold. The statues were covered with aluminum and then coatings of gold colored varnish to create their golden shine. Aluminum production was very limited in the early 1880s, so back then it was a very valuable metal. Cotin received $1,650 for creating the statues. Let's take a closer look at each statue and I will help you determine what abstract idea or concept each represents. We'll be looking up at them from the second floor of the Capitol Rotunda and also from the Whispering Gallery to get different perspectives. As we do this, you will quickly get better at figuring out what these statues represent. Most tour guides at the Capitol will begin with this statue. That's a hint. Notice the pen in her right hand and her ledger or tablet cradled in a left arm. The young child might be representing the future as he reads what the woman has previously written. Notice the statue also has a year recorded and the sculpture's name carved by the woman's bare feet. We begin here for a reason. Ready to name this statue before we move forward and leave it behind? It's history. From history, we will continue around the rotunda to our right in a clockwise direction. So next we see a statue of another woman. She has a compass and she appears to be measuring something on the sphere that she holds. Maybe the sphere is a model of the earth or moon. There is also a star or pentagram on her head. Some would say that the lower points of the star represent the four ancient elements, which are earth, water, air, and fire. And then the fifth or top point represents spirit. Could she be using science? Yes, science. Moving clockwise, we see a man. He's holding an ancient scroll that is starting to unroll in his right hand. 
His left arm is resting on a stack of modern books, maybe like the books we have in our law library at the Capitol. To determine the abstract idea here, it helps to remember what the people in this Capitol building do. Based on old ideas and concepts, they create new laws. The statue is law. Too easy? No, this is not music. See, it's not that easy. But obviously she has a horn, a trumpet. There's the expression, blowing one's own horn, meaning you're bragging about yourself. That's not it either. Imagine though, that she's blowing her horn as an announcement that someone special is entering the room. Probably somebody that everybody knows because that person is, now think in very general terms, yes, famous. So the statue is called fame. Before we go on, notice once again, the name and date at her feet. Next statue, not a lot of clues here. Like history, she has a pen and a tablet. She's writing again. But since she's here at the Capitol, it's probably not a grocery list or the joke of the day. It would be more artful, maybe a special story or a wonderful poem. So we would call it literature. Did you get that one? Next is Macho Man. This guy has massive arms from swinging his sledgehammer as he shapes metal on his anvil. His sleeves are rolled up. He's ready to go to work. No robe for this dude. He's got pants. And take a look at his feet. He's got shoes. This man is from the late 1800s, not ancient Greece. The gear-like wheel maybe indicates that he works around machinery too. The cloth in his hand may suggest that he works in the textile industry, or he may just need to wipe off his sweat from his brow because he's working so hard. Can we agree that the statue represents industry? Did you say work? That would be close. Don't give up. We're halfway around and they get easier now. Compared to industry, this statue looks more peaceful. She holds a lighted torch that could re represent enlightenment and hope. Like history, there's a child at her feet. We know now that the child represents the future and he is holding stems of wheat, which are often a symbol of love and purity. In the woman's right hand is the well-known symbol for peace, the olive branch. You've got this one. Yes, peace. This next statue is one of my favorites. So many clues. Look at her head. She's got wings. The symbol for the planet Mercury, the planet that moves fastest around the sun. She holds a globe. It could represent the Earth. After a lot of research, I learned what she is holding onto with her left hand is called a steering oar. It's used to steer a boat. But the biggest clue is at her feet. You see what it is? Now, put it all together. Speedy. Anywhere in the world. Crossing the waters if need be. All so that she can deliver a package. Maybe in two days. Got it? Amazon Prime? 
mm, close uh, commerce. Another guy with pants and shoes. This has to be Iva's favorite. He has a sturdy digging fork in his right hand, and his left arm is cradling a cornstalk. And of course, the young pig at his feet. There's a story that's been passed down that Cotin had first sculpted an Arkansas Razorback pig. He was told to change it. But look at that cornstalk, not even as tall as his shoulder, yet it has two mature ears. We Iowans know that is not today's modern corn. It starts with an A. Everybody name it. Yes, agriculture. Before we leave agriculture, look closely behind the digging fork. I told you they would get easier. Here we go. She is holding out with her right hand the laurel wreath of victory. And she holds the palm frond in her left hand, which also represents victory. Don't let this distract you. The statue is, of course, victory. This is another favorite for me. No, she's not a champion ping pong player. It's a mirror, not a paddle. And it's a very good mirror. So when you look in the mirror, it gives a perfect reflection. It never lies. It tells the truth. All of you knew that. Good job. This is our last statue. It represents our efforts to always make our lives and the lives of others better. Proudly holding forth a burning torch, enlightening the world, leading the way forward. Always ready to take the next opportunity to continue to move forward. This statue represents progress. Well done, everybody. March on. I'm sure Cotin was proud to sign his name here. So, quickly now, how many statues? Twelve. How many Greek women? Eight. How many Greek men? Two. How many total people? Fourteen. How many times did you see Cotin, 1885? Five. Five. Thanks for watching. Please come to the Capitol sometime and take a look for yourself at these beautiful 12 allegorical statues.